welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in today's video, I wanted to talk about intention, will and optimism. If you've seen the video called Change Your Karma, which I'm going to link to in the description below. So if you missed it, don't worry, there's a link to it below. But if you did watch that video, you'll know that I talked about Edgar Casey and how he went into hypnosis and he discovered a lot of things about reality as we know it and astrology and this concept of intention, will and optimism. He came to these three because he was exploring astrology and whether astrology really works, whether it's a good tool for us to use. You know, is it, is it pointless? Does it have any validity? Through that hypnosis session, not only did he explore various astrological charts, but he came to realize that, yes, astrology is absolutely an accurate system and it is a good tool for us to use here on Earth. You know, the hermetic principle of as above, so below, it stands. But he also discovered that we can go beyond the stars, especially if we use intention, will, and optimism. Now, in that video where I discuss Edgar Casey in the Change Your Karma video, I explain how I wasn't going to go into the how-to of intention, will, and optimism in that video, and I said I would save it for another video. Well, this is that video. So I'm going to take you through something that I've come to as of today, which I think should be really helpful in understanding these three. At first, I was thinking about these three, intention, will, and optimism, as separate things. And I was reflecting on all the teachings I've studied and all the research I've done and all the things I've learned over the years. I was thinking about each one of these separately. This morning, when I came to the realization that you really just need to do one of these effectively, and then the other two will follow suit that's when I thought good I think I can record this video now each day this week I've been wanting to record this video and I haven't been able to because I haven't found the right avenue in and this morning it all just clarified in my head so I hope I can communicate it here today in a succinct way um, but yeah basically what I've come to is the realization that you need to do one of the three really effectively and then the other two will just naturally lift. But before I take you through that, I just wanted to take you through some of my background thinking that I've had over the last few days. What have been some of the things I've been thinking about? Well, one of the things I've been thinking about in relation to this is Oprah Winfrey. Oprah uh, is just so incredible. We all know Oprah. And she had this amazing shift in her life where I think she was doing a report somewhere she was one of those roving reporters one of those people they'd send out onto the field and she'd have to report back and all that kind of thing and I'm pretty sure it was in one of those interviews where she said the word Canada a bit in a strange way or something but it kind of took her into this matrix like moment or she, she fell down this rabbit hole or something happened where she kind of just stopped and realized and thought, what am I doing with my life? What is this? What is this all about? You know, one of those deep, profound moments. And I think she explains that that was the time when she discovered that television was using her. And she made a shift in her life that was so profound. She decided in that moment that she was going to use television. That's huge. That is such a huge shift in intentionality. It's wonderful, you know. Um, that's a really, really profound moment. And I think from then on, she got her producers to, to say to her, every time they were pitching an idea for an episode, they had to state the intention behind the episode so that's pretty profound as well 
look at that. I mean, not only does she change the intentionality of her own life, but she was getting people around her to think and act in an intentional and deliberate way as well. The ripple effects of that were huge. I mean, that was world changing because all of us who watched all of those episodes, we got the benefit from that too. So it's, it's really huge what, um, what a good intention can do in the world. So you can go at intention from the angle of, you know, I'm going to consciously and deliberately state my intention before I do something. So each day when I wake up, I'm going to have an intention for my day. You know, maybe it is I'm just going to bring some more peace to the world, to, to the immediate world around me. Maybe that's my intention for the day. So you can set that yourself. So that's definitely a way in. Uh, I was thinking about optimism as well. I was thinking about those motivational coaches and people who say things like you have to fake it to make it. I was thinking about that. I had a business teacher who taught me that. In, uh, I think it was in year 10 or something. And he said, girls, you got to fake it to make it. I went to an all-girls school and that, that was one of the things he taught us. So that was really interesting. Um, I also thought about, you know, and so obviously that's working on a mental plane. What about working with just the body? You can do this by working just with the body. You can do body work. You can visit an energy healer who knows all about the Hara line. And who knows about that that line of intentionality? And, and they can they if they work with their hands and they straighten your hara line. Um, and it's I've heard that it's a kind of blue line that sits beneath the energy field. I'm pretty sure that's that's how that works. And and people can straighten that, and people can feel it, and and work with your line, and and that kind of thing. So. Um, there are all these different avenues and all these different ways into dealing with these three. What I came to this morning, which I really wanted to share with you, was the fact that you just need to look at one. And I believe that is will. I believe if you are willing to look at your own life, and I'm talking really look at your own life with honesty, then that'll start to change things and lift the, lift the other two. Intentionality will start to come into your life and optimism, of course, will naturally follow as well. I think those two go hand in hand and they will just come in. But it's when you are willing and you use your will to look at your own life. And I'm talking really look at your own life, honestly. And this is not something you have to do with anyone at all. This is just something you do in the privacy of your own mind on your own. I really believe the best spiritual work that we do is in the privacy of our own mind. Sometimes you might need a spiritual witness to make it real. And so that you can, you can feel that it's, it's, it's really concrete and you've done it. So sometimes you might want that. Sometimes you might want to work with someone. You want a spiritual witness you want it to be real. I understand that. I do that kind of thing. Uh, and they're really dear friends of mine and people I go to when I need to make something real or if I need a witness. But there's a lot of work that I do that's just in the privacy of my own mind. And that's definitely looking at my own shadow and seeing where am I not being honest or where have I not been honest. Because sometimes... You know, if you've been conditioned and you're an autopilot and you're running out of your subconscious, there's a lot of stuff that you don't know. And as you grow, later you look back and you think, oh my goodness, that was terrible. So um, there's a lot of growth that happens in the privacy of our own mind. And I think that when we are willing to look and when we're willing to see it and not judge it and be with it and just provide space for what is. I think a lot of negativity and things that were holding us back, it starts to dissolve and our lives take on a more intentional quality. Now, just quickly, I'll take you through the difference between intentional living and just wanting to do something. 
So if you look back at your life and you think, well, why did I take that degree? Or why did I take that job? Or why did I date that person? Or whatever it is. You probably just did it, probably, I'm guessing. You probably just did it because you wanted to. Because you thought, well, I want to take that job because I'll earn lots of money. Or I want to do that degree because I'll get that job. Or I want to date that person because it'll make me feel good. And wanting is good and it's great and, and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's wonderful. But wanting is just about you. And where life shifts to intentionality is when life becomes about others and you. Okay? So you can't forget about you. Because also, equally, if you think about it, you look at children. And I was thinking about that this morning. And I was thinking about how children... Um, and I, I do think this kind of falls into intentionality. When children will, say for example, suppress their own emotions, if all the adults around them are arguing, you know, the child might think it's their fault and they'll suppress their own emotions and they do so with the intention of others, right? They do so with the intention of um, saving the others from trouble. And that's a wonderful and noble and good intention to have. But they're doing it at the cost of themselves. And when you grow into an adult, you will still have to deal with that. That's something that's been suppressed and your body might express it or your life might be expressing it in dif difficult situations. So intentionality has to be, yes, about others and it has to include yourself. So it has to be good for others and good for yourself. And it really is that Oprah thing, you know, by her deciding that I am going to use television she did so in a way that she didn't compromise herself and she was able to serve so many people around her in such a profound way so that's really the difference between just wanting and building intentionality into your life and I do think that when you've got that kind of intentionality operating in your life the optimism just follows suit you know, so it's, it starts with that willingness to look and to look honestly at your own life and to own your shadow, right? So you don't want to be afraid of your shadow. And I've got some notes here that, um, you know, what, what, are, what are some of the good ways of looking at your own life? Okay, well, let's, let's have a look at this. I've got the first point. This is kind of cute. You could have an astrology reading. <laughs> I didn't want this whole thing to seem like just a giant ad for my services, but that's kind of what it is. You see, I am willing right now to look at my own shadow. <laughs> and that is that this whole thing has just been an ad to get you to have a reading with me. No, I'm kidding. Look, I mean, that look, an astrology reading is one way of looking at your life, but it's definitely not the only way. I think, as I've said before, the best way is to sit down, be by yourself and contemplate your own life. Why have you done the things that you've done? And when you really look at why in an honest way and you explore that and you explore your own decision-making process and how you do things, you're going to come to some amazing realizations. Um, now, if there's some shadow going on, and if you're not particularly willing to look at that, what are you going to do? Well, you're not going to want to sit down by yourself and think, and you're going to run away. You're going to distract yourself. You're going to do some kind of self-sabotage. You might ring friends, or you might need to bake a cake, or you might want to clean the house. I know when I don't want to sit down and do some work, all of a sudden I have to clean the apartment, and it's pretty neat most of the time but I have to clean it and it's just crazy so um, we have all these weird ways and weird things that we do don't we so so it's good really to to try and sit and contemplate and think slowly I've got another note here about thinking slowly so it is that kind of Byron Katie style meditation 
Um, not the kind of meditation where you zone out and you try to avoid thinking. Not that kind of thinking meditation. This is like where you actually think, but you actually kind of start to think deeply about aspects of your own life in the privacy of your own mind, okay? When, it, when it's shadow work, sometimes we don't want to do that with somebody else. Sometimes we just want to be by ourselves and acknowledge those things uh, to ourselves, you know. Uh, I've got another note here. What are other ways of looking at your own life? Another note I have here is being creative. And I've also got a note here, being in nature. Any one of these things, you know, just sitting and contemplating in the silence, in the stillness, being in nature, being creative, tapping into that inner child. What did your inner child love to do? You know, just doing some of those activities, um, exploring what's fun for you, you know, and, and recognizing who you are at your heart, at your core, you know, who are you in your heart, at your core? What do you love doing? What are you passionate about? Um, and, and recognizing that, that, you know, okay, why did I take that degree program? Oh, wow, I did it to impress my parents. You know, now going forward, is that going to work for you? Can you keep living a life just to impress your parents? You know, you've got to live for you and others, right? So the, the, the you part has to be there, okay, in, the, in that intentional life that you want to create because you want to live intentionally you want to be the deliberate creator as Abraham Hicks says you want to be that deliberate creator of your own life so I think I'm going to leave it there I could talk for hours about this subject I find this stuff so fascinating and I hope this has provided at least some interesting food for thought for you to get your own mind thinking and if you'd like to work with me of course please take a look at my website Otherwise, I'll see you next time.